Hello and welcome to the second video in my iNav for Beginners 2022 series. Now there are links down below to all of the videos in this series and last time I explained what iNav was and why it might be of interest to you. Again, if you are an iNav pilot already, you can skip the first three or four videos and kind of get into the meat of all the different setup. Probably going to happen in the next video where we get into the meat of everything. This time we are going to be doing two things. We're going to flash the flight controller with a new version of iNav. So we'll download configurator. We'll flash the flight controller with the right target. That's the version of firmware made specifically for that flight controller because there's lots of different options. And we'll also do the basic accelerometer calibration. Uh, hard to say, but relatively easy to do. And then we'll do the radio setup. I'll show you how to set up your radio and also how to check that's all working in iNav. Now, the thing is, the radio setup for iNav is going to be the same, whether or not you're flying a wing, whether or not you're flying a V-tail, a conventional plane with a conventional tail, or even a boat or a car that iNav supports. The iNav setup on the radio is always going to be the same, and there's a couple of tips and tricks. So let's get on the bench and get ready to get everything set up. So here on the bench, this is the flight controller that we are about to flash. This is an older Matek F405 wing. A couple of reasons that I really like these. These have all the PWM outputs and loads of pins to connect all the things to that you need. And if we go on the computer, you can see here that not only does it show you how to connect everything, but there's actually specifically things about how you wire iNav up. So where the ESCs are gonna to connect to, where you plug the buzzer in, where you're gonna plug in your receiver with SBUS and everything else. It makes it incredibly easy to flash. So this is the one that we're going to do. In this video, as I just said, all we're gonna do is flash it with iNav, do the basic setup, and make sure that the receiver tab is working. And then next time we can get into a lot more of the weeds with the GPS and other bits and pieces. Now, the first thing we need to do is download iNav Configurator onto the computer. If you just Google iNav Configurator Download, or I'll put this release, uh, this link in the description, we're going to scroll down here, and then we have all the targets at the bottom for Linux, Mac, and for Windows. I'm going to run Windows 64 version. I'm going to download it, and then what we can do is once it's downloaded, we can have a look. So I've already downloaded it, so let's just open that up. So that is iNav Configurator. If we open it there, there's the version. So if we right click and say copy, and then go on to the desktop of the computer and say paste, then what it'll do, it'll copy iNav Configurator onto the desktop and we will be ready to go about and do the flashing. Now we don't need to install it as such. We can run it just from the folder here. So we're looking for iNav Configurator .exe. There it is. If I double click that, uh, Windows, yep, yeah, there we go. It says, mm, should we run this? And we say, yep, you're okay to run. And then get iNav Configurator for the very first time. This is the cool thing. iNav, you don't have to pay anything for it, but if you're using it, it's worthwhile kicking the project a couple of bucks. So once this has started, then we are in a great place. We can actually flash this flight controller. Now the thing to do is if you're not sure what the version of or the target needs to be, let's just plug this in. Now I've played with this historically with iNav5. So if we click on connect, then we've got all the set, we can start setting things up. However, if you go into a flight controller and all you get is this box here, let's um, clear output history, and we just type in version, it'll actually give you the target that needs to be on the flight controller. That is the one that we're interested in. That's the important little bit of information. Let's exit out of there. So now we know what the target needs to be. And actually the cool thing is with Matek is it actually gives you what the target needs to be for iNav in the listing. There it is, that's the one that we need. Really, really good stuff with Matek. So now we've got all that running, here we go. What we're gonna do is we'll disconnect and we'll flash it. So we're going to firmware flasher. We are going to cho choose a board, M for Matek. We'll find F405SE, which is the one that we were looking at. There it is. We'll choose the latest and greatest. We'll make sure that full chip arrays is enabled because we don't want any of the old settings 
on the board. We'll load the firmware from the iNav servers. There's all the fantastic information and we'll say flash firmware. Now, what should happen is you get this DFU stuff here at the top, device firmware update, and the flight controller will start talking to the computer or vice versa, and it will erase the existing setup and then it will start to copy everything across. If it does not go into DFU and you get things like, you know, error opening serial port and that kind of stuff, it's a Windows driver that needs fixing. You need to use something like Zadig or one of those tools. I've made a video on it. I'll put a link down below. So if you have that issue, you can go and have a look at that. It's relatively easy to fix. So now on the computer, we can see that we are flashing iNav. Once it has done this, it's gonna reboot. And then we need to set a couple of things and then we're ready to do a basic radio setup as well. So I'm not speeding this up. This is exactly how long it takes. And now the flight controller has finished flashing. Just give it four or five seconds to allow it to reboot into the new version of iNav. And then we should be able to click on connect. First thing we're going to get asked by iNav is what are you going to use? Is it going in a quadcopter, airplane with a tail, a wing or a rover or a boat? My build here has a V tail, so I need airplane with a tail. So you'll see at the back, it just looks like a box. When it reboots, when this comes back in a moment, we'll see that magically the little diagram in iNav has turned into a little plane. And that means that all of the basic stuff that needs to be set up so that iNav is ready to fly a plane is all set. And there we have our little plane icon sat on the bench. So if I move the flight controller, you can see the plane moving on the screen. Really cool stuff. Quick overview of this interface. For those of you that have used Beta Flight in the past, this will feel quite similar. Here's the sensors that are running. Uh, when they're a blue color, they are happy and fine. As you'll see in a minute when I start setting things up, some things might appear red. That means that although they're configured, they're not working properly. We have pre-arming checks over here. If you're ever struggling to arm iNav, plug it into configurator and see where the problem is. At the moment, it's happy with everything, apart from the accelerometer is not calibrated and we need to do that. In terms of setup, we need to just work our way down each of these tabs down the left-hand side. And funnily enough, the next tab in the sequence is to calibrate the accelerometer. Now this needs to be put in six individual positions. If you're coming from, again, from beta flight, this seems like overkill, but lots of more sophisticated flight control software that can do things autonomously want this kind of extra level of setup. So what we're gonna do is say, we're gonna to want to calibrate the accelerometer and it'll say you need to put it in each position and then click calibrate. So we'll do that. So with a flight controller level on the table, we'll click calibrate accelerometer and that will fill in one of them, there it is. And then what we need to do is just put the flight controller in each position. And this is why I like to do this before I install everything else, because as soon as you start plugging other stuff in, it starts to get very complicated and it's harder to do this. You can do it when it's inside the model. You have to move the entire model to redo it. But if we can do it now while it's not attached to anything, it's an awful lot easier. You need to, as close as you can get it to each of these orientations, doesn't matter if it's spot on. The only tricky one is upside down. I'll need it on the edge of the table for this. And we'll click on calibrate accelerometer again. That should give me my last one. That tells me that we are finished. We'll click OK. We'll click Save and Reboot. And then when we come back, we should find that that is reading flat and level. And iNav now knows which way is which. So there we go. We're reading pretty flat. So as again, as I kind of lift, move it around, I can kind of fly, fly the plane by moving the flight controller. You can see all the control surfaces and everything on there. And now all the pre-arming checks are green, although we'll probably make them red before we finish as we go through the setup. So we've done setup, we've done calibration, and we've done the mixer. So at this point, I would probably do the mixer. The mixer by default has already been set for an airplane. If we scroll down though, we can see the individual outputs where the servo outputs are. So we have stabilized pitch, roll, and yaw. By default, it's giving me two um, roll 
So uh, two ailerons, so we can plug them in separately. That looked pretty good to me, so we're happy with that. The only other thing we're going to do in this video, just conscious of time, is what we'll do is we'll jump down into the receiver. Now the receiver by default is set for SBUS, although there's all these different options that we can choose. I would say for your first build, I would try and go for SBUS. But before we do that, let's disconnect from the flight controller and let's unplug it from the computer and grab the radio. And let me show you how I've got this set up. The great thing with iNav is that iNav doesn't need complicated setups on the radio. And what we're going to do is let's just go into the model menu and zoom across. I've got the standard four inputs in whichever order that you want. You can match that in iNav. And then we have in the output screen, those four controls, elevator, aileron elevator, throttle and rudder. And then I've added a couple of extra ones. I've added channel five uh, to a switch. So that's an arming switch that will allow us to uh, make the model safe. We have one for modes, that's a three position switch up here, and that means that I can just pick three flight modes. And I also like to have the buzzer set on my momentary switch, because I am going to plug a buzzer into this. It means that if it does crash in long grass and I can't find the thing, then I've got a chance of uh, sounding the buzzer and finding it. Having a buzzer on an iNav model is also incredibly useful. It will let you know what's going on. So with that set up, what I need to do is plug in the receiver into the SBUS connection. And if you're not sure, then all I would do is jump onto the, the website for the flight controller and have a look where it's supposed to be plugged in. You can see the receiver here is supposed to plug into the one that says SBUS. Surprise, surprise. Now there's other options and we'll get to those later on, but I'm just gonna plug it into the SBUS there we go so that is now set and let's plug the flight controller back into the computer and we should see that the receiver is powered and there we are the receiver has connected so now the receiver's connected let's check that the receiver stuff is working we'll click on connect on the flight controller and we'll go into receiver and if i move the controls Hopefully the stuff will work. So the throttle is moving the throttle, fantastic. The rudder is moving the rudder, this looks good. Elevator is moving pitch or E. Aileron is moving uh, roll or A. Use the sub trims on the radio to make sure that each of these numbers are 1500. That's really important. 1500, which is the middle channel position, says to iNav that you don't want it to change direction. The other big tip for this is if you hold the sticks on the radio to the top right hand side like that, you should see in configurator that they all go to their maximum value as you can see here. If they do, then you're in good shape. A couple of tips, I could potentially go in and disable the trims for all of these things. Um, it's useful in case you accidentally catch them. And at the moment, that means that we have the radio set up and we can carry on in the next video. The flight controller is now flashed, we have the radio connected, and the iNav can see everything working. Now, if you did come in here and find that your throttle is moving the wrong control, and that can sometimes happen, you can change the channel map, there's three to choose from, and you can change them until you get the one that's going to work for you. By default, AETR is the way that iNav and lots of others like it, but if you're using a Spectrum or other kind of radio, that might not be the default layout. But if it come in here and it doesn't work, then just change your channel map. Try each one in turn, and then you should find the one that's gonna work for you. And again, make sure the middle channel value on the radio is exactly 1500. And then we can see that's my buzzer channel, channel eight, we can see the arm channel, channel five, and we can also see the mode channel, channel six, all moving around. We are in great shape. 
So now we're in a really good place. We have a flight controller with a brand new installation of iNav. We have the accelerometer calibrated and it knows it's going into a plane. And we've also made sure that the radio works too and all of the controls are working in the right direction and the middle channel value positions are exactly 1500. So now we can get into some more of the meat and that's what the next video in the series is going to be about. We'll set up and connect the GPS and we'll go through all of the other things like setting up modes and the on-screen display and all of that goodness. So join me next time where we'll get into those weeds and we'll see more of iNav Configurator and specifically where you go to do certain things which has changed a little bit in iNav 5. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.